Well, good morning. The Mass offer for all the people of the parish living and deceased. As we consider this gift of our Lord, by extension, to many adults in the world, that would be authority. The word comes from the Latin word auctor, which means author, the origin of all things, God, right? So ultimately, he is the authority. He is goodness itself. He is truth itself. So how do we, you know, first of all, what is authority? Why does our Lord give us even the, why, why is it important? And then how do we exercise it? And how do we live with authority? Well, first of all, it's actually that wherein our Lord gives responsibility to certain individuals to exercise, you know, look out for the good of others and protect them from those who might do evil. And so that there might be a civilization and order to life. The opposite of authority is anarchy. And anytime you see a word ordinarily with an A or an N at the beginning, it means it's a negative. It goes back to the Greek, atheos, atheist, against God, okay? No God. When it comes to anarchy, no law, no order, okay? That's what revolutions, that's how they happen, right? French Revolution, 1789, 1794, anarchy. Destroy everything, culture, order. That meant the church had to go, as well as the king and queen. Communist Revolution, 1917 in Russia, spread its errors as Blessed Mother, Our Lady of Fatima, who appeared in 1917 to three children, and told them that Russia would spread her errors if there weren't enough rosaries and penance done. Get rid of authority. That's the only way Lenin and the Bolsheviks took over. Undermine authority. That's, look what we saw last year. Now that's the seedbed of it. If you know history, you see it. All right. Anarchy. But we're not made for that. The devil is all about that. He's all about that. But we're made for order. It's not good for the man to be alone. Let me, I will make a, help, a helper for him, a help me. Adam and Eve, be fruitful and multiply. There's an order here. There's a community of persons, not opposed to each other. Okay. Now with original sin, that changes, doesn't it? Because now you introduce pride and selfishness. And those of you who are married know that the two things that really undermine your marriage and when you have troubles, it's pride and selfishness. So then the opposite would be humility, and love, selflessness. Right? But someone can't love, they can't look out to see the needs of others if they're not humble. If they're proud, it's all about themselves. It's the pleasure I get out of it, it's what I get out of it, what am I going to lose? That has nothing to do with God. That's the devil. That's sin. We don't find fulfillment or joy in that, do we? Um, no, actually, humility allows me to see the needs of others. Right? So when it comes to one who has authority. Well, why does God give authority? Okay, just so there's order in society. So for one who exercises authority, and that can be um, divine, that's, you know, given by God, supernatural. Could be marriage, family, huh? Mom and dad exercising that authority, um, given to them by God. Uh, it could be, you know, a pope, a bishop, priest, a spiritual order. More the temporal order, it could be, you know, military, it could be government, civics. Um, but in order for someone to exercise authority well, you have to be close to the author. So the greater the authority, the greater the responsibility, the more the need for the person to be on his knees or her knees before the author of life. Because he's the one that gives us the ability to judge correctly. So, right, so authority is never, to, you know, to be exercised and when there's emotion, especially anger or fear. Um, it's actually one with humility and prayer, okay? And when we have that, then we can think clearly. It's always good maybe to bounce it off somebody that we love or someone that trusts us, that we trust, okay? So the importance of prayer 
when Bishop McGee talks about his time as a secretary to St. Paul VI, John Paul I, and then John Paul II, he talks about um, in the early days of John Paul II trying to find him one night, in the middle of the night. And he'd been in the chapel, he'd been all over the place, and he finally talks to the Polish secretary, Father Monsignor Jewicz, who's now Cardinal Jewicz. And Jewicz says to him, he says, go back into the chapel, close the door, let your eyes get used to the dark, then look up by the tabernacle. And sure enough, when he did that, about a, you know, he sees this white figure on the ground in front of the tabernacle, shape of a cross. That's how John Paul would pray. But that's what he would do to guide him. They said when he was in Poland, pray before Mass, Mass, pray some more, and then about 11 o'clock he'd start with the work of the diocese. So if we're going to exercise authority, well, and it, it, we have to be close to he who is the authority, God, our Lord. If someone isn't, even though they may claim to be, but you can see by their actions, well, then we have to, you know, help them to realize, no, this is what's right. Okay. We're called to be lights in the midst of the darkness. We have the truth that Jesus Christ gave us in the church. He gave it to the apostles. They've handed it on. It's right there in the catechism. As far as what is the proper use of authority. It's not about power. It's not about money. If that's someone's focus, if someone's clamoring for authority, that's dangerous. If someone's never been obedient and they want authority, look out. Dangerous. So that's how important family life is. You look at all the dictators in the history of the world, terrible relationships with their dads. Terrible. You can go almost just down the line. Okay? Is it any wonder in our country almost every man in prison never had his father around? Fathers exercise authority in a unique way. Moms nor, nor ordinarily make most of the decisions in a family, right? What the kids are going to wear, what they're going to eat, dot, 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 right? That's the way it goes. But the authority that dad exercises, though, right, is very important for the raising of the children, especially the boys in teenage years. They're watching dad. They need to know they're accountable and there are consequences, right? So they have a respect for authority. If they don't, look out as they get older. So as far as exercising authority, those with authority, yes, they need to be close to the one right, who is the author of life, the author of goodness. He is goodness. But then also, when we exercise the authority, you know, as far as having a humility. So authority is given by God, not for the individual. Well, yes, the way we live out the authority, helping us, you know, grow in virtue and, and get to heaven. But it's not about the worldly honors. It's not about power. It's not about notoriety. It's not about attention. Okay? Ordinarily, the one that you want authority is the one that didn't want it. Okay? That's how beautiful it is to see in the, the different popes throughout the centuries. They, and, you know, they, they tried they try to, to get away from it. Or the different saints, St. Saint, Saint Ambrose of Milan, okay? late 1300s, tried to get away. They kept saying, no, you have to be, you have to be the bishop. Okay. There's a humility. And as long as there's that understanding, that sense that it's not about me, it's about the people I'm, I'm here to serve, that could be mom and dad. Okay. It could be pope, bishop, priest. You know, again, civil, military. Okay. Then things work out. And, but to have that humility, it means that I have to be able to to admit when I've made a mistake, when I'm wrong. Okay? Not to make excuses, just that, yeah, I was wrong. Okay? That's what a true leader does, the one that exercises authority. Now, of course, Christ is God, so, but for us, living in the human condition, yeah, we make mistakes. For a husband, for a father and a mo or a mother to take a child aside and say, hey, I shouldn't have said that to you. Will you forgive me? Child will never forget it. It will change the way that child looks at life. Right? And that will help that child understand what is authority, how it's used properly. 
Okay. So it's really good for us to, to ponder, and as our Lord says here, he be the greatest among you, must be the last of all and the servant of all. That's authority. Okay. And look out if it's the opposite. Okay. I think we've seen that. We've experienced that. But if we haven't really thought we have, talk to any immigrant that's come here in the recent decades. They have. Okay. But those who are older, who remember the Iron Curtain, they remember communism, if you haven't, read up on it. We'll talk to some people. Okay. When authority is abused, when it becomes about power, then it's no longer about the individual and the common good. And what's the common good? The protection of an individual so that individual can thrive and use his gifts and talents in life. Okay? Be free. For the good. For the good. All right. So we ask Our Lady St. Joseph to help us. Um, they who were given authority by God over the Son of God, the Christ child, um, that they might help us to exercise authority with humility, always looking out for the common good, looking for those for whom we're bound to serve. Almighty God bless you through the Immaculate Heart of Mary.